there's something I need to talk about, which is the the game awards. Yeah, uh, for those of you guys who didn't know, the game awards is basically the the game the Academy Awards for the gaming industry. And last week, um, Jeff has announced um, the nominees. Uh, on their website, there are quite a few games that I'm not really uh, that I have absolutely zero information about. Uh, I'll be frank with you guys. But anyhow, let's just um, check out the nominees for this year's the Game Awards. The Game Awards will be held on December 7, and I'm planning to watch it. As unfortunately, I won't be able to watch this live. Because as I mentioned in here, I have a 9 to 5 job, so I won't be able to watch this live. But what I will be doing is, I'll be reacting to this as if I'm uh, watching it live. Let's check out the nominees. And I'm gonna give out my personal opinion on who I think will win the, uh, the award and who which game should win. Before I jump out of I just want to let you guys know that this is purely my personal opinion, so you may choose to disagree with my opinion, but don't go it because my opinion is different than yours. So, without further ado, let's check out the the cat, the nominees for this year's the Game Awards. So I'm gonna um, start from the bottom to go all the way to the top best esports event esports coach esports team esports as athlete esports game and content creator of the year i'll be very frank i have absolutely zero knowledge when it comes to this esports game and content creator of the year as a matter of fact by speaking of content creator of the year let me let me let me just go right into content creator of the year first I'll be skipping the, the entire esports sections because I have absolutely zero knowledge about it. As for content creator of the year, right? Among the five content creators right over here, right? Iron Mouse is the, the most popular among the world. So Iron Mouse might win this. But who I think should will, will win, I have absolutely no idea. I won't be surprised if um Iron Mouse win this, so but then again is this is just my personal opinion. Most anticipated game. Uh, recognizing an announced game that has been demonstrably illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Uh, so we have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades 2, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is um, Yakuza 8, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. This one is very obvious. It's very obvious that Final Fantasy 27 is gonna win this and they should deserve it. Because among the five games right over here, right, the most hype game among the five is without a shadow now, um, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Come close second is probably um Tekken Head. Might be Hades 2. Like a dragon, um there's hype around it, but compared to Final Fantasy 7 and Tekken 8 and Hades 2. It is very high. Uh, it's a very low chance for Like a Dragon to win this. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, but Yakuza in general is a good game. But if you put in a much more popular franchise such as Final Fantasy and Tekken 8, yeah, that chance. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a good game, but Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is gonna win this, and they, sh they should win this one. Second, uh, come first. Second is probably Hades 2 or Tekken 8. Best adaptation. Recognizing outstanding creating work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. So we have Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, The Super Mario Bros. Movie, and Twisted Metal. Okay, I'll be very frank, I have absolutely no, no, I no zero knowledge on Twisted Metal, but this one is also another obvious choice. The Last of Us. The Last of Us is gonna win this, uh, I'll be very frank. Come close second is probably Castlevania Nocturne. Even though I have not watched any of any of this, but based on the re the, the media that has been uh, reacting uh, to this, it is very likely that The Last of Us is gonna win this. 
although I have to admit that um, from what I heard from a friend of mine from Demon as it was, Castle, which he, he did watch the um, Castlevania auction. It is good, but so it might come. It might be um, the dark horse for this. As for Grand Turismo, I heard from a friend of mine who is a movie geek. From what I understand, like the movie, it does not have the the Grand Turismo essence, and it is more likely a biography, movie, which is not to be supposed to be like that because to me right Gran Turismo is all about the racing and not a biography movie and that which is why it is very highly like unlikely that uh, Gran Turismo is going to be this Super Mario Brothers movie I heard it's, it's kind of good but I can't really comment that much no comment on Chester Metal to sum up uh, who will win best adaptation The Last of Us The Last of Us is um, is gonna win this and and I have a feeling that they're gonna love us is gonna be the last of us and if the last of us the last of us might not gonna win this is it might probably go to Castlevania in option but it is very high likely that the last of us is gonna win this because it is very um it is very good and the people um speak highly of it. Best multiplayer for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences irrespective of game genre or platform. This one is a coin toss between Baldur's Gate 3 and Street Fighter 6. Although I have not played any of these 5 games, but from what I've watched on social media, it is a coin toss between Baldur's Gate 3 and Street Fighter 6. Diablo 4 is highly like, unlikely going to win this because people have been talking badly about it. No comment on Party Animals and Super Mario uh, Bros. Wonder though. Although I have, I have to admit that Super Mario uh, Brothers Wonder is, uh, is a fun game for family but best multiplayer I think Baldur's Gate 3 or she Fighter 6 deserve it more. And who uh, my vote is probably going to um, Street Fighter 6. Because I'm pretty sure Border Gates is gonna win at least one award some some way or another. Just my personal opinion. Best sports racing. Best sim strategy. Best family. Hmm. Once again, I have not played all five all of these games, but it is very high likely that Super Mario Brothers Wonder is gonna win this because I did watch some of the streamers um, play this game and it looks legit fun. And I won't be surprised if family of um, four or three get around and have fun playing this. So my vote is, is gonna be for or uh, it's gonna be on um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Campo second is probably. Ari Animals, I guess. But it's very likely if Super Mario Brothers one of um gonna win this. Best fighting. Hmm. No idea what this is. Mortal Kombat 1 is expected. Ooh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2? This was recent if I remember correctly. It's a fun fighting game. And I, I'm, I'm kinda shocked that this was nominated because this game was released kind of I believe well, kind of recent. I'm not sure when is the release date, but I remember this it was re uh, it was recent and it, it is it's quite good. No comment on Pocket Bravery though, and of course it ain't uh, Street Fighter Six has to be in this. Personally, I would uh, I would say Street Fighter Six um, sh will win this, and which game should win? It has to be Street Fighter 6 because even though I have not played any of these five games, but from my observation right, I feel like Capcom has put in a way tons load of effort onto Street Fighter 6. And also they it has redeemed themselves ever since the release of Resident Evil 2 Remake and Devil May Cry back in 2019. And based on the reception that I've heard so far, Street Fighter 6 is one of the best um 
these three fighting games that has been ever released best review as a matter of fact along with Street Fighter 2. The same could be said for Mortal Kombat 1 as well. Surprisingly won best multiplayer in the Golden Joystick Awards. But then again, the, uh, from what I understand, the Golden Joystick Awards is basically fan votes. Based on how the industry is going to work on this one, it's very highly that you're gonna choose um, Street Fighter 6 over Mortal Kombat 1. Mortal Kombat 1 might win this, but I have a feeling that Street Fighter 6 is going to win Best Fighting No oh, Shadow. Best RPG Borders Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Lies of P. But then again, I remember La uh, Elden Ring, which also happens to be a Soul game, nominated in Best RPG. So, considering the fact that Lies of P is, is a Souls game, so okay. Sea of Stars and Starfield. Uh, unfortunately, this one is definitely going to Baldur's Gate 3. I have to, I'm gonna have to say it's definitely going to Baldur's Gate 3 because this game has been the talk of the town ever since its release. Even though 16 is right over here. Baldur's Gate 3 is gonna win this. I'm so sorry to every single Final Fantasy fans out there, but Baldur's Gate 3 is gonna win this. And as a matter of fact, right, Final Fantasy 16, a lot of people were putting, putting high hopes on this. But the moment the game was released, it was silent. No one was talking about the game. Like for 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 months, I was like. Buddy, what the hell happened? As for Borders Gate 3 on the hand, right? Ever since its release, it has been the talk of the of the town. And not to mention, right? It it is one of the most critically acclaimed games together with Tears of the Kingdom, from what I understand. Borders Gate 3 is gonna win this category, and I feel like this should win this without a shadow of a doubt. So sorry, Final Fantasy. I love the series overall, but Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win this. Because this has been the top of the town as of late. Best Action Adventure. Is Resident Evil 4 even an adventure game? Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I really love Resident Evil 4 Remake. And as a matter of fact, right, Resident Evil 4 Remake is my personal game of the year. But I just don't think that Resident Evil 4 is considered an adventure game man. If you're telling me that Res is Resident Evil 4 is an action game, I would say yes. But action adventure? Mm, I don't know man, I'm not really sure. So, best action adventure. Well, so we have Alan Wake 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and Tears of the Kingdom. Hmm, this one... People have been talking about Alan Wake 2 as of late. But here's the thing, Alan Wake 2 is definitely an action, but is it really an adventure game? I'm, uh, I'm not really sure. I did watch people playing a Marvel Spider-Man 2, it's definitely actually an adventure without a shadow of a doubt. The same goes for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The, the same could be said for J Star Wars Jedi Survivor as well. But who is going to win this? Zelda. Zelda is very highly is going to win this because from what I understand, right, Tears of the Kingdom is also another game that has been highly reviewed as well. But here's the thing, Tears of the Kingdom is practically an upgraded version of Breath of the Wild. Still, it is very high likely that Tears of the Kingdom is gonna win this. Come close second is probably Spider-Man 2. Then again, it's just my personal opinion. It's, um, it's either Tears of the Kingdom or Spider-Man 2, but it is very high likely that Tears of the Kingdom is gonna win this. Best Action Game. Oh, damn it! Oh, why? Why would you do this? Oh my gosh! Okay, so so here's the thing. I I played High Five Rush. I I played the game, and I really loved it. 
But the thing is, I'm a core six is in here. Okay, so here's my prediction. I'm a core six might win this, but who I feel should win this best action game? I find much. I feel like I find much should win this, but it is very likely I'm a core six is going to win best. Action. Uh, a lot of people has been hyping for this game ever since it was announced during last year's The Game Awards. So I won't be surprised if Armor Core 6 is going to win Best Action Game. And not to mention, Armor Core 6 was released way later compared to Hi-Fi Rush. Because Hi-Fi Rush it was announced and Shadow Drop on the same day. But on the day it was Shadow Drop, it was, it was on the January. So. UCC bias might affect this so it is very like, high likely that Armor Core 6 is gonna win this but I really hope High Five actually no comment on Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner and Remnant 2 though but from what I understand Remnant might 2 uh, I'm sorry Remnant 2 might snatch best action game because from what I heard people have been this game um, is also quite good as well from what I heard but once again it is very highly Armor Core 6 is going to win best action game best VR AR oh I've, I've seen I've seen trailers of this no comment on synapse from purely based on my observation it is very highly that Resident Evil Village VR Armor is going to win this I feel like Village should win this as well because they really Capcom really deserved the amount of effort they put on uh, Resident Evil Village. Come close second is probably Gran Turismo, but I feel like Village is gonna win this. Next, best mobile game: Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, Honkai Star Rail, Monster Hunter Now, Terra Nil. For this category, who I which game I feel should win this? It's Honkai Star Rail. It's Honkai Star Rail without a shadow of that man. I have been playing this game ever since the first day it came out on March. And every version update, Honkai Star Rail has been innovative with their game. And they have been trying their best to make the game as accessible as possible. And not to mention, right, their artifact farming, or should I say the relic farming, it's way better than Genshin, uh, I'm, I will say this. And their resin system is way better than Genshin as a matter of fact. And to top it off right, the music in Honkai style is an absolute 10 out of 10 banger. I wouldn't be surprised that Honkai style is nominated in best music or best score, but unfortunately they didn't get nominated for best music. But I'm just glad that Honkai style got nominated in best mobile game and I feel like they should win this because they deserve it way more than any of these other game does. Okay, from what I heard about Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis there and Monster Hunter Now, from what I heard, these two games kind of suck based on how what my friends have been commented. I heard some people have been voting for Hello Kitty, but here's the thing: is Hello Kitty Island Adventure really that? Because I. I heard absolutely nothing about this game until it was nominated. Same could be said for Terra New as well. You know what? I feel like Hong Kai Subway is going to win this and they should win because Hoyoverse Hoyo has put in a tons of effort on this game. And I will be absolutely livid if Hong Kai does not win best mobile game. Next, best debut indie game. Best independent game. I'll be very frank. I have absolutely zero knowledge on all of this game. But people have been talking highly on Sea of Stars. From my understand. So it might go to Sea of Stars. And again, I can't really comment on best independent game, but of stars might win this who knows next best community support uh how many times final fantasy 14 has been nominated for this category hold on a second okay so 
Final Fantasy XIV has been um, nominated for Best Community Support since uh, one time in 2019, um, none on 2020, and then in 2021, they won Best Community Support and Best Ongoing Game in 2021 and 2022. So this is like what, the third consecutive time Final Fantasy XIV has been nominated for Best Community Support? Come on, just give, come on, just give other games a chance already for, for, for Christ's sake. I believe this was the year that um, Cyberpunk pulled a 180 from what I understand. So it could, it could be either, um, then again there's Border Gates 3 as well, so it's a 50-50 chance between um, Cyberpunk, 20, uh, Cyberpunk and Borders Gate 3. And who I think should win this, I believe it's Cyberpunk. Because this is the year where Cyberpunk did the, the 180, so I believe Cyberpunk should win this. Best on book? I literally said something about um, Final Fantasy XIV. And as a matter of fact, right, Final Fantasy XIV, this is their third consecutive time that they have, they, they have been nominated for Best Ongoing Game. I don't know about Genshin though, but this might offend Genshin players out there, but I do not think Genshin is going to win this, and I don't think they should. Even though the content for Fountain is ridiculously awesome, but if we're talking about overall content throughout the entire year of 2023, right, it feels like it's kind of a lackluster to be very honest. And as a matter of fact, right, there are literally two reasons that I don't think Genshin Impact should win best on win. Number one, to this day, they still have not improved the artifact farming, which I feel like it should be at least something similar as how Hawkeye Starry does. Number two, the anniversary views, which I feel like is kind of a lackluster to be very honest. I mean, 20 free draws and a few other free freebies and that's pretty much it. Come on man, at least because some other games such as the likes of Fate Grand Order and Grand Blue Fantasy, right? At least they give new 5 star characters or some kind for their anniversary. Genshin on the other hand, right? Here, yeah. have 23 draws and freebies, you're done. I was like, what the f***? And oh, and speaking of birthday, right? It was the last week, right? Here's what Honkai did. Honkai Star Rail, they give about 100 Primo Gems for my birthday, which is kind of nice, you know? I mean, I, I mean, it's better than nothing. Genshin on the other hand, right? One fragile resin, they're done. I was like, these three factors alone enough is the reason I don't think Genshin Impact who are, won't win best on going and they shouldn't win. Because they, the Genshin team can print, improve the game way better. And I know, I understand that ever since Fontaine out, they have been trying their best to improve the game as much as possible, but I feel like this is not good enough. They can do way much better. Therefore, if they want to win best on win game, they should at least improve the artifact farming or some uh, or some kind. As for who should win best on going, just just give uh, just give other games a chance, okay? Uh, as long as it's not Final Fantasy XIV or Genshin. It can be uh, any other games. It, it could be Apex Legends, it could be Cyberpunk, it could be Fortnite. But my if, if I were to vote who should win best on going, I feel like Cyberpunk's got this. Because as I mentioned in the, the best community support um, category, Cyberpunk 2077 did the 180 where they fixed the game when they should have done it way earlier. And I'm, I'm glad that they did that. So, my vote is on Cyberpunk 2077. And, and please, to the to the judges of the Game Awards, please give other, other games a chance. Because Final Fantasy XIV has been winning best ongoing game and best community support for two 
consecutive years. I get it that Final Fantasy XIV is critically acclaimed, but just give other games a chance already. You're already popular enough. Just give other games a chance, man. Please. I'm not shitting on Final Fantasy XIV. I'm just saying that give other games a chance to win. That's all I'm saying. Next. Games for Impact. Oh, so this was the game that Juan Hazmir has been um, talking about. For those of you guys who didn't know, uh, Juan Hazmir is uh, the lead game designer for Final Fantasy XV back when he was working in uh, Esquire Enix before he left to open a new studio called Metronomic. And I believe he's the game director for No Straight Roads, which was released, I believe, in I think like 2019 or 2020, I'm not really sure. And he mentioned something about um, a space from the Unbound by uh, Mojikin Studio, which is located in, in um, Indonesia. Considering the fact that I'm from Southeast Asian as well, so my votes on um, space for the Unbound, but who, but to be very frank, like, I have absolutely no idea um, about these five. Wait, wait, wait sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six games, but my votes on a space for the album considering the fact it's made by um, Indonesian studios. Innovation in accessibility. Mm, another category that I can't really comment because among the six games that has been nominated right over here, the only game I played is Hi-Fi Rush. But I think I'll. Uh, I'll just go uh, what um, Max and Simmons from the Yo, the the Yo Video Game School says, and uh, I'll just I'll just go with what uh, what they say, which is a uh, novel Spider-Man 2. Plus, consider the fact that the only game I have um, played is Hi-Fi Rush, so I can't really comment on this category. So I think I will go with what the Yo, Yo Video Game School says and always go with Spider-Man 2. Best performance, oh god. This is a hot one. This is a hot one. I'll be and I'll be very frank. My vote is on Yui to be very honest because he did such a magnificent job voicing as Peter Parker in the game. Even though I only watched people playing it, Yui nailed it. Like he freaking nailed it. But the same could be said for Ben as well. A lot of people have been praising Ben for his performance in Final Fantasy 16. So it is very highly that Ben is gonna win this, but my vote is I'm, I'm so sorry, this is just my I'm sorry, personal opinion because Yui really nailed his performance in Spider-Man 2 and my, my, I have to give my vote on Yui but it's so then again right, there's also Idris Elba over here as well man holy crap Oh, this this one's a tough one to be very honest. Um, this one's a really tough one to be very honest. My vote's on you without a shadow or that, but who who's gonna win this? It could be either Ben, Idris Elba, or Yuri. We'll see. We'll see. This one's a really tough one to be very honest. I mean. I wouldn't mind if Ben or Idris wins best performance because I'm pretty sure everyone everyone over over here has done a magnificent job but the one that really captured my heart the most is without a shadow without Yui. So long story short, my vote is on Yui, but who will win this? It could be either Ben, Ben Star, Idris Elba or Yui. This one's a really tough one. Next, best audio design. I will need that three of three of the five categories um, nominated by over here is our horror games. And as a matter of fact, right, Dead Space won best audio design for 
for the IGN horror game of the year. I forgot the official name, but I remember that Dead Space won best audio design for horror game of the year. My vote and who I think should win best audio design, Hi-Fi Rush. It's Hi-Fi Rush without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, the concept of Hi-Fi Rush is basically it's all about the music, man. It's all about the music. So my votes are on Hi-Fi Rush, and Hi-Fi Rush should win this. I mean, I get it. Alan Wake 2, Dead Space, and Resident Evil 4. Whole games have very good audio design. I uh, I get it, but Hi-Fi Rush should win this because on principle alone, Hi-Fi Rush should win this. And my vote is on Hi-Fi um, Hi Rush for best audio design, best score, and music. Final Fantasy 16. Soken's got this. Soken's got this one in the bag. No, no questions asked. Although I really enjoy the music in Hi-Fi Rush, Soken's got this. You cannot deny the fact that Final Fantasy 16, or should I say, Final the Final Fantasy series in general, has legit good music someone has good music my favorite final fantasy of all time which is final fantasy it has good music 10 has good music 13 even though some people call it the worst um final fantasy of all time has good music 15 has good music thanks to um yoko shimomura san the same could be said for Final Fantasy 16 as well. I mean, Soken has done a, such a magnificent job in 14, and I did listen to some of the music for 16, and it's legit good, mind blowing good, like holy crap. So Soken is gonna win this, and he should win this, considering the fact that he battled cancer. Although it's a, he's working on uh, 14, he was battling cancer while composing music for Final Fantasy 14, and I feel like he should win and he should uh, win an award of some kind for the amount of hard work and effort he has done. So, no questions asked. Best score in music is gonna go to Soken. Um, Soken. I wouldn't mind if um, I Fight Why should win it, wins this, but. It should be, it should be so can, it should be so can. And I will be absolutely livid if neither Final Fantasy 16 nor Hi-Fi Rush wins best score. Next, best art direction. Hmm. Okay, I'll be very frank. I really like the art direction that Hi-Fi Rush has, but it is very high likely Alan Wake 2 is going to win this. Considering the fact they're using they use live action actors from what I heard, it is very high likely that Alan Wake 2 is gonna win this. I Fire Rush come close second. So it's either Alan Wake 2 or High Fi Rush. Best narrative. Ooh. Okay, this one is definitely a 50-50 between Alan Wake 2 and Borders Gate 2 because these two when it comes to narrative these two stands out the most it depends on the, um, with the, which narrative the judges um, favors more either Alan Wake 2 or Borders Gate 2 so this one's kind of a hard one, but no comment on Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy 16, and Spider-Man 2. But I, I don't think Spider-Man 2 has a good um, narrative. The same could be said for Final Fantasy 16, because from what I heard, right, 16 has a very good combat, but story-wise, um, some people are kind of like, meh. Because from what I understand, right, people were prior to 16's release, people were hyping over 16. But the moment the game came out, there was literally nothing. No 
No talks about Final Fantasy 16 for, for weeks, maybe months. I absolutely nothing. It's like, buddy, what the hell happened? As for Elden Ring 2 and Baldur's Gate 3, on the other hand, it has been the talk of the town. Started things off. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 started things off. And then, and then came um, Alan Wake 2. And as a matter of fact, right, Alan Wake 2 has, been, has the most nomination along with Bodo's Gate 3 because it was released recently, which was the end of October. And people on social media were talking about it. So, BCC Bias might have a hand in this, but from this or uh, on my observation, it's a 50-50 coin toss between Alan Wake 2 and Borders Gate 3. And as for who should win this? I'm sorry Alan Wake 2. I did play Alan, I did play Alan Wake 1, but I feel like Borders Gate 3 is gonna is should win this. Because you cannot deny the fact that the, the amount of effort Larian Studio put the amount of effort on the game and pushing the fact that every single part of the game is voice acted compared to some other games such as the likes of Atelier Riser, Konkai and Genshin where the side quest has no voice acting at all. I feel like Baldur's Gate 3 has got, um, got this one. Shoot win this. Best Game Direction. Ay, 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 ay. I'm so sorry to Spider-Man 2, Mario Bros. Wonder, and, and Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like this one's also another coin toss between Alan Wake 2 and Mortal Skate 3, man. Don't get me wrong, Mario Bros. Wonder is a magnificent uh, family game. Spider-Man 2 is a legit good game as well, without a shadow of a doubt, but this one is also another coin toss between Alan Wake 2 and Mortal Skate 3 as well. Tears of the Kingdom might win, um, might, uh, my win best game direction considering the fact that Tears of the Kingdom is critically acclaimed, very highly reviewed, so so it's either Alan Wake 2, Borders Gate 3, or Tears of the Kingdom. And I think should win this. My vote is on Baldur's Gate 3. Because, okay, I will admit, well, um, Tears of the Kingdom is very highly reviewed, but in terms of which game is the talk of the town, it's Baldur's Gate 3. Because Baldur's Gate 3 is not only highly reviewed as well, but it's also the talk of the town as ever since um, the game, the release of the game. As for Tears of the Kingdom, it's highly reviewed but unfortunately it's not the talk of the town. Considering the fact that Tears of the Kingdom is practically an upgraded version of Breath of the Wild, which from what I heard is one of the best games of all time. Tears of the Kingdom is basically an upgraded version of the one of the best games of all time but from what I heard Unfortunately, from my perspective, there hasn't been a single people talking about Tears of the Kingdom. So I feel like Borders Gate 3 is gonna win game, best game direction. And I believe the last category will be best, uh, I'm sorry, game of the year. Alan Wake 2, Borders Gate 3, Marvel Spider Man 2? Resident Evil 4, I understand because it's the horror game of the year. Super, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I understand because it's the best family game of the year. Tears of the Kingdom, um, no questions asked. Highly, uh, it's a highly reviewed game. So, my personal opinion will be if I were to vote. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win um, game of the year? 
Baldur's Gate 3. I've been saying this quite a number of times. Baldur's Gate 3 has been the talk of the town for ever since the release of the game and it has been highly reviewed by critics. So I feel Baldur's Gate um, is going to win game of the year. It's very highly going to be Baldur's Gate 3. The same could be said for Tears of the Kingdom as well because Tears of the Kingdom is, also, is a very highly reviewed game by critics as well. But I feel like Borders Gate is going to win this because this game has been the talk of the town ever since the game was released. Unlike Tears of the Kingdom which is practically a, an upgraded version of Breath of the Wild. I mean I wouldn't mind if Resident Evil 4 wins game of the year but I feel like Borders Gate really should win this one. I feel like it should win. And that's pretty much um, my thoughts on um, the nominees for this year's The Game Awards. Once again, I have to let you guys know, this is purely my personal opinion. You can choose to disagree on whatever opinion that I have mentioned. But don't go ape because my opinion is different than yours.